Good morning. This morning I'm waking and finding that a fully powered computer has next to no battery. I'm wondering why that is today. What is it that makes you think that you have the right to put your technological use and capabilities onto someone's computer, onto their technology, into their intellectual property, and into their copywritten work? We have people in America that do not regard the mind. You see, people think that ideas free the flow or flow freely and maybe they do for a lot of people but is it how you make your living if you do not make your living with ideology or ideas or marketing concepts then you do not understand how someone like me or others like me make our living if you are working in a paltry hourly job that's on your choices in life my guess is you chose that life now there's excellent salaries to be found in restaurants and retail accounts. But here's the truth. Those jobs have a lot of physical fatigue over time. Those jobs do have a lot of people that are, well, literally moving in and out of them all the time. It can be hard sometimes to create social networks unless you're appropriate socially and economically with the people who come in as customers. I know of a family that got to become a family because the female was a bartender and the elder gentleman that was interested in her just kept pursuing her so very much that she finally caved in and married him. But she had known him for a good two or three years as a guest in that shop. Now, I'm not saying that's the most effective way to find a husband. But what I'm saying is that today people do make relationships and liaisons with who they work with. I cannot always say that that is the best way to find a partner in life. Yesterday I experienced something that felt like a mother and son, but then I realized by the way that she touched him that maybe that wasn't the case. I cannot always tell about how cougars work. But what I know about people is that you don't have the right to interrogate someone as if you're some sort of a jerk. When I'm asking questions to people, I'm working on my social skills and I'm encouraging them to be more social. Yesterday I had a young woman literally drive up, I saw her look me over, pull over, put her car out of the way, which was foolish, and literally walk up to me with a paper bag saying, would I like things in the paper bag? Well, first of all, I don't know you from Adam. Second of all, it's a time of pandemic and epidemic and disease. Third, I don't really truly know what's in the bag because you've just uttered off a few things that I can get in the shop that I'm sitting right now outside of to allow my heart to rest. So, what is it that you did best in this situation? What you did was come on some sort of inclination to either hunt up someone who is in poverty for your own need to help someone or you actually have been a part of the people stalking me or you're a part of a network that wanted to somehow assess me without my lawful or religious or spiritual or psychological or intellectual or whatever the fuck it is consent you see my consent is I may speak with you for a few minutes I may qualify you as a consumer of me. In the sales world, we call it qualifying the customer. Are they really able to buy? Once when I was working on a team situation, I literally met someone at an event. And I didn't think much of that person at all. I actually was somewhat offended by how they were dressed. I thought they were not prepared at all for that business event. And I didn't really think about the constructs of how she might have come to that event until a little later. But then she took the stage of that event and started to speak, and I was floored in every way. God taught me the best lesson of my day, that I have to be careful in my ability to assess people. And most people we know in marketing today evaluate someone in less than three seconds by what they look like, how they feel, and how their angels around them guide them. And that day, I was getting a lesson of my life, that the most important person that I've ever met in my entire fucking existence, outside my late wife, 
was right there in that room that day. Thankfully, I had enough gumption to handle it afterwards. And, well, we'll have to figure out what's going to happen with that because of form and function. But I'm not going to keep sitting here thinking that I'm doing the best of my abilities. What I know is that every day I face a challenge. And every day for a year and a half in a community, I've literally been harassed by people. I go to sleep and I wake up and I have less beard on me. That motherfucker is a sexual assault. That is a violation of a human being's body. That is an abuse physically of someone. That is a psychological, emotional, and spiritual abuse. Because I grew my beard over the course of a year down to my belly button in honor of the God that I love and believe in. And whether I call my God Mother and Father God, whether I call my God Odin, whether I call my God anything else under the sun because my God listens to me, pro provides for me, and cares for me, that's my right underneath the United States Constitution. The whole fucking reason that America is actually here was because people wanted to be able to practice their own religion without being impeded by the government of England. Now that's the short summary. The longer summary I'm sure we could see in a great film, but the reality is we have rights in America, and our First Amendment right is the freedom of assembly and freedom of religion. But since I've been here, somebody kept putting their hands in and out of my pockets, in and out of my briefcase, in and out of my suitcases, in and out of my bags, taking my business cards, practically ruining them, and taking all my marketing materials and destroying them, literally making them filthy, crumpling them up. So we live in a community of monsters, and a monster attacks someone in poverty. When I talk honestly and frankly about my experience with panhandlers, I'm being honest and frank that what they say to kiss your ass to get your coin is one thing, but what they say to other people in poverty is something else entirely. I've had to work to create a positive, not reputation, but a positive interaction with some people. And what I've learned to do in the case of those people is to w swing wide and stay completely clear of them. I've got one guy that when I get the chance, I may pound him. Because he interfered with me so fucking much on the strip when I'm just trying to go get my lunch that I am pissed off. And sometimes old fucks need a lesson. But we don't do that anymore, do we? We don't have the fighting tournaments that we used to have in England. For those of you who are PBS watchers that watch classic films. But the reality is that our society still have people who like to pound people in the night, like to harm people in the light, in the night, and like to sexually assault people in the night. We also have police officers and sheriff that take advantage of people when they're incarcerated and sexually assault them there. They steal all your property. Then they go after your home and try and take all that too. We also have siblings who are immoral that do the same thing, thinking that they're in charge of an adult individual they're not. 